we're going to talk about some different ways to draw structures and to make things a little bit simpler as we deal with increasingly complex structures. So far, we've been working with Lewis structures. And with Lewis structures, we're drawing out all of the bonds, we're drawing in all of the lone pairs, and especially as a molecule gets larger, these can be a real pain. So then a chemist by the name of Kekulé developed a slightly modified version of the Lewis structure. And really all a Kekulé structure is, is just a Lewis structure with the lone pairs omitted. So if we look at um, a fairly simple molecule, so say we have an alcohol, I'll do two CH2 groups, and a chlorine. Well, in the Lewis structure, we of course need all of these bonds drawn out. We also need to include the lone pairs. The Kekulé structure is very similar, but instead we're going to leave out the lone pairs. And his rationale makes a lot of sense in that you just need to know there's enough lone pairs to make an octet. So if you look at the oxygen or the chlorine, you know the atom has enough lone pairs for an octet. So the chlorine, for example, has two electrons in the bond, so it must have three lone pairs to have an octet of electrons. But still, as structures get larger, uh, the Kekulé structures can be a lot to draw. So a more simplified way to write structures and still understand all of the bonding is in a condensed structure. And in a condensed structure, we omit many of the drawn bonds, if not all of the drawn bonds. Now, admittedly, condensed structures are my least favorite. Um, I don't tend to use them much, uh, but it is important to have a basic understanding of them and how to write them. So what we're basically doing is writing our structure from left to right in the order in which the atoms are bonded. So if we take this structure above, uh, this Lewis structure, and we wanted to write it from left to right, first we have the HO group. Next we have a CH2. Next, we have another CH2, and then we have a Cl. This is partially condensed. What we can do to further condense this is put these two together. And we'll put them in parentheses and say that there's two of those. So we'll write HO, I'll put a parenthesis, CH2, 2, and Cl. And this 2 tells us we have two repeating groups. Let's say we want to condense this structure. One thing I'll point out um, first, which is just kind of a convention You'll notice that these two CH3s I wrote as CH3. This one I wrote as H3C. Um, it's really not incorrect if you had written CH3 here, but what I do is I just flip that to show that the carbons are bonded together. So if we want to condense this, one thing you can first recognize is that with reference to this carbon here, we actually have three equivalent groups attached. It has 
one CH3, two CH3, three CH3s around it. So we can condense those three and we'll actually start the condensed structure by writing in parentheses CH3 and there's three of those on that blue carbon. So we'd start the structure like that. And I'll go ahead and highlight those in green since I did in the original structure. So we have the three CH3s, the carbon. Next, we have the CH2. And we'll just write that as a CH2 group. And then finally, we have the nitrogen with two hydrogen. That is an NH2. And this would be the condensed structure for this molecule. Okay, in this next example, it's a little bit larger, so a little more to deal with. But again, just work it from left to right. And we're basically writing the CH groups and then adding anything else that's involved. Uh, this, I'll start with the CH3, and I'm going to give these letters just to help us keep track. And it would not be incorrect if you wrote H3C to start, like uh, we had in the original structure. So that's A. Next we have B, which is a CH group. So here's CH, and that's B. But we need to tell the reader that this has an OH attached to carbon B. So what we do is, because that attached group is polyatomic, there's two atoms involved, we're going to put that in parentheses. And there's no numbers or anything, because it's not a repeating unit or anything like that. That just tells us that this group in parentheses is attached to the neighbor to the left, or bonded to the neighbor to the left. Okay, next we have a CH2 and another CH2. So let's combine those together. So we have CH2, two of those, and that's C and D. Right. Next we have E, which is a CH. And coming off of it, kind of like the OH, we have a BR. And we need to tell the reader that. But the BR is a single atom. It's not a polyatomic. We don't need to put it in parentheses. Just write the BR. And we know it's bonded to this. OK, next we have another CH, which is F. And then attached to CHF, we have two equivalent CH3 groups. So once again, we can join those together and just say there's two of those on the carbon. And I'll make that G, and since they are two of the same on the same carbon, I'll just write them both as G. Put those in parentheses, CH3, and we'll put a two because there's two of those. Again, we label both of those as G. Now, one thing that sometimes gives people confusion is they'll look at this and say, well, you put this BR, right? in the chain, so how do I know it's not attached 
to carbon E and also attached to carbon F. Well, if you were to do that and draw out that structure, um, we'll just put a bond to here is CH E, and then you might want to put the BR, CHF, and so forth. We run into a big problem with this bromine. Remember that halogens only want one bond, and this is not going to be valid for the bromine to have two bonds. So that's how we know it's just going to be attached to the neighbor to the left. There are a few common condensed abbreviations that you just need to make, for, make sure you know. Um, this includes, if you see CHO, not to be confused with COH. Uh, if you have OH, that's an alcohol. But the CHO is always going to be a carbon double bonded to an oxygen single bonded to a hydrogen at the end of a chain. If you see CO2H or COOH, that is this group where you have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen with an OH. And then if you see in the middle of a condensed structure, CO, and the carbon has no hydrogen on it, then that means you have a carbon um, with a double bond O attached. So let's finish this up with a couple of examples where we go in the opposite direction and we convert the condensed structure to a more expanded structure. So in this third example, we start with, we have a CH3. And again, I like to flip it just so we can show the carbon that's bonded to the next carbon. So let's make that carbon A. Then we have three CH2s in a row. So I'll write to three CH2s in a row. CH2, CH2, CH2. These are all, I'm just going to make part of B from up above. Next, I have a CO. This carbon doesn't have any hydrogen on it. Uh, so it's just going to be directly double bonded to the oxygen. Let's make that C. And just so we can keep track, I'll even highlight it here. So we have C double bonded to O. And then next we have a CH2. Like that D. And then finally at the end, we have the CO2H group. And that is, matches this one up here. So we just draw C, double bond O, OH. And that's this group. So that's how we um, partially expand that structure. Now, if I were to draw the full Kekulé structure, I would need to draw out all of the bonds. But this tells us really what that structure looks like. So now let's expand uh, structure four. This one, I'm going to go through and just go ahead and assign letters to everything. Uh, so we'll start with we have the two CH3s, the CH, the CH2, O, CH2 and CHO. So now what we're going to do is because we start this chain, if you start or end a chain with two or three groups in parentheses, that means they're bonded to the neighbor. So we have CHB and that will have the two CH3s bonded to it. So I'll just put one here and one here. And it doesn't matter if you were to put, um, you know, I drew this one going down. You could draw it going up. That doesn't really matter. All right, next we have CH2C.
and then we have an O. The difference, if you compare this to our above example, this oxygen was on next to this carbon with no hydrogens. This carbon has hydrogen, so this is just a bridging oxygen. So it's right here. What that means is it connects the two CH2 groups. Just like that. And remember, oxygen likes to have two bonds, so that works out well. So then we have CH2D. And then finally, our CHO group, which should be familiar from up above, right here. We'll have the double bond O and the H that is going to be E, what we highlighted in blue. A couple final things to note is one, why are these condensed structures useful? Uh, what well, really dates back to when people were um, you know, writing publications and it's very easy to type out a condensed structure on a typewriter for publication. A bit out of favor because it's so easy to draw chemical structures on a computer. The second thing is an important note, you can't put rings into condensed structures. So we're not going to deal with any rings in a condensed form.